Good morning, rabbit lovers. Welcome to the Happy Harvest Homestead. In this video, I'm going to be talking about fighting in a rabbit colony. When I first started researching about rabbit colonies, and in my years since then, when I've been having rabbits in a colony, I've heard many horror stories about rabbit colony fights, and many people say you can't or shouldn't keep rabbits together because they will fight. But I decided to try colony raising anyways, and I found out that for the most part, that is not the case at all. When you begin a colony and put rabbits together for the first time, or when you add a new rabbit to an already existing colony, it's completely normal to have fighting. The severity of the fighting depends on the rabbits, Sometimes it's just chasing and nipping. Sometimes they will roll around on the floor, biting and kicking each other. And this isn't always the case, but sometimes it just takes a nip or two and their fighting is over. It all depends on the rabbit's personalities. In the beginning, there are usually several fights of various sizes. Sometimes they're really bad, sometimes they're not so bad. Usually one big fight will happen, then the rabbits will separate and be apart for a little while. And then they'll start fighting again and then stop, and then fight a third time. It's usually not constant fighting, they usually happen in bursts, but there are quite a few of them the first few days. Then over the next few days, usually the rabbits get more used to each other, there may be a few scuffles, usually they are not nearly as violent as the first day. Then eventually you get to the point where the rabbits will just avoid each other and be able to coexist peaceably. Then sometimes it only takes a few days, sometimes it takes a few weeks, in some cases it may take longer, but eventually the rabbits will start liking each other and snuggling and grooming and cuddling with each other and sharing food. It is so fun to watch when it does happen. And then, for the most part, your colony is just smooth sailing. They are respectful of each other, they're nice to each other, and they're just normal and good. But it is not unusual to have small scuffles every once in a while. Sometimes a more dominant doe will snort and kind of jerk her head forwards, maybe nipping a little bit at another rabbit who is sharing their food, like saying, get away from my food, this is mine. And then other times they'll share food just fine. Sometimes if a rabbit is resting in a certain area and another rabbit comes over wanting to snuggle with them or use that same area, they'll chase them away because they want to be left alone. Just like other animals and people, rabbits sometimes are in different moods and they like to snuggle with one rabbit one day and then the other day they decide not to so they'll want to be left alone. And because rabbits can't speak, they use their body language to communicate and a lot of that is chasing or grunting or nipping is how they express the more negative emotions. The amount of scuffles in your colony oftentimes I've noticed is determined by the personality of your dominant doe. I have had rabbit colonies where I couldn't tell which doe was dominant. The queen was super nice and sweet and there was hardly any scuffles, no fighting, hardly ever. And then other colonies like the one we have right now, our dominant doe is more aggressive and more opinionated. She usually starts most of the scuffles. If someone tries to, you know, be by her and she's in a bad mood, instead of moving away from them, she'll make them move away from her. She's more forceful and opinionated and more like a very bossy queen. Because of our current herd queen Elodie's behavior and personality, it's very easy for me to tell the order of all the rabbits. Elodie's at the top. All the other rabbits, except for Iantha, or are kind of in the middle. And then Iantha is most definitely the lowest on the picking order. She is the smallest and the youngest, and she gets picked on a whole bunch. In previous colonies, all the rabbits seem to be equal in my eyes. I don't see anyone bossing anyone else more than usual or any other sign to indicate who's the herd queen. In the past, I have not been able to tell who is where in the pecking order, but in this colony, it's very easy for me to tell mostly because of Elodie's intense personality. It's possible that Elodie is just the way she is because that's her personality that she was born with, but she is the only one of my rabbits who has been raised in a cage. We bought, we bought her when she was full grown. She had not lived in a colony before, so this entire, you know, social dynamic, fitting in, working with, you know, other rabbits and living with them is not usual to her, unlike our other rabbits who were either born in a colony or raised in a colony from a very young age. So it's possible that her lack of social skills is contributing to her aggression and her not so nice personality and behavior. Okay, so let's talk about wounds. When rabbits fight, they often get wounded, you know, because they have teeth and claws that they fight with, especially whenever they're like locked in combat with each other. I am more lax than many people, but if my rabbit gets a wound, I just let them heal by themselves. Taking a rabbit out of the colony when they are wounded is a really 
bad thing to do. Whenever you remove a rabbit from a hierarchy, even if it's just beginning, you know, those first few days or hours they've been together, you destroy a lot or all of the hierarchy order. So when you put that rabbit back in, they have to work extra hard to get to get back to where they were. And even if they are the lowest on the totem pole, all the rabbits are going to put them in their place again. So even if they are wounded, taking them out and letting them heal, putting them back, won't really do any good in the long term. If you want to remove a rabbit from a colony because it's being picked on or something, it's best to remove it completely and have it live outside the colony for the rest of its life. Or you could do what I do. I just let them heal by themselves and leave the pecking order intact. A vast majority of the time, wounds are either minimal or medium, maybe a scratch on the face, a nick in the ear, and they're not really much to worry about or stress about. They will heal easily on their own. A lot of blood can come from a very small cut, so even if you see a lot of blood on a rabbit, that doesn't mean their wound is very big or very bad. In the rare cases where you have a very bad herd queen who is just bullying all the other rabbits constantly and is causing a lot of really bad wounds, or if you have a rabbit who is very low on the pecking order and all the other rabbits are kind of picking on that one rabbit, you may decide to permanently remove the rabbit who's causing the problem or the rabbit who is receiving most of the problems, leaving the main colony intact still. And at the moment, I think that might have to be the case with Elodie or Iantha. Since poor Iantha is getting picked on so much, she has sustained a couple wounds of medium severity, and I was hoping she would just grow bigger or stand up for herself more as she matures because she's still not full grown. But it's possible that she will be leaving the colony in sometime in the future. Or if Elodie continues to not have babies, then it might be her who's leaving. She had some of last winter and last spring to get pregnant and have babies, and she didn't. So I'm going to give her another chance this fall and winter and possibly spring too. But at some point I might decide she's just not going to get pregnant and replace her. So in that case, I could keep Iantha. But right now, I'm just going to see what happens. If things keep going badly, I'll take action. But for now, everything is still kind of okay. While oftentimes sticking random rabbits together, making them live together, works out just fine and they're all friends, which has happened to me many, many times. There are times when sticking random rabbits together and forcing them to live together doesn't work out so well. And I think this situation with these rabbits and their personalities might be one of those times. But I'll just remove a rabbit, whether it be Elodie who's causing the problem or Iantha who is receiving the brunt of the problem. And I will probably replace them with a kit from this upcoming breeding season. But for the amount of rabbits I've had in colonies, I think this being my second time I've had a problem with personalities and aggressiveness towards the other rabbits, that's pretty good. The only other time I had to take a rabbit out of the colony because he was causing too much problems was Barlow, one of our old bucks. He was raised in a cage all his life and I stuck him in our colony and he was being a little too aggressive with the ladies trying to breed them when they were already pregnant so we switched him out with Ronwyn who is much more respectful and kind and normal. So there you have it. Those are my experiences with r rabbits and colonies and fighting and wounds and dealing with rabbit personalities. Most of the time it goes great, but sometimes it doesn't. Lots of fighting in the beginning is normal, and a little bit of fighting every once in a while is normal as well. Small wounds are fine, medium severity wounds are fine, big wounds are not fine. But most of the time you don't have to deal with wounds. Instead, you're stuck with a bunch of rabbits snuggling together all the time. Thanks for watching!